Welcome back everyone to day three here at Incredible World. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a favorite kind of ride at a theme park, and that is the biggest, fastest, tallest roller coaster I can possibly find. Do you have a specific favorite? Why don't you put it in the comment section down below? Now for me, the bigger the roller coaster, the better. I'm looking for the ride that's gonna be the absolute best at every theme park that I go to. And today we're going to talk about a different ride that has to do with real life. It's Gospel Day today at the park, and we're going to take a thrill ride through the time and talk about the ride of your life. Now let's get started with our Incredibles creatures. Now, lately it's been getting hotter and hotter, and I don't know about you, but sometimes it is more hot than I can stand, but that is nothing compared to today's extreme animals. Let's tour a couple of the world's extreme hot spots and meet a couple of the Incredibles who live there. First hot spot inside a volcano. Now that's hot. Can anything actually live inside a boiling hot volcano? Yep, believe it or not, there are teeny tiny creatures called thermophiles that live in there. Thermophile means heat lover, and boy do they love that heat. In fact, they can live in such extreme hot places because they love being bored and eating poisonous chemicals that are in such places. Yum, iron and sulfur. God and Kong designed these amazing creatures with the ability to survive in such extreme extreme. Now on the second hot spot, the desert. There are lots of incredible plants and animals God designed to live in the desert, such as a camel. God gave a camel a mouth that's tough enough to eat a thorny cactus, a hump that's full of fat, like an emergency fast food restaurant on his back. Since there's not a lot of food in the desert, feet that work like snowshoes, so they won't sink into the desert, into the hot desert sand, and an extra eyelid so that, that acts like a windshield wiper to get any sand out of his eyes, and many more especially designed body parts. And one more animal that lives in the desert hotspot, the fin fox. Don't you love those ears? Well, God designed them for a reason. They keep the phoenix fox cool. God also gave them light-colored long fur that protects the fox from the hot sun during the day and keeps them warm at night. Did you know how cold it gets in the desert at night? Well, it does. He also has fur on his feet so that it won't get burned in the hot sand and fur in its ears to help keep out the desert bugs and sand. God also gave the fin fox the ability to go long periods of time without water. And he made them nocturnal, which means he can come out at night when it's cooler and sleeps most of the day when it's hotter. Fenwick, the Finnick fox, can remind you that God thought of everything. Isn't God incredible? And let's remember to praise him as we see the incredible creatures he made. Now, it's time to do that, to praise God for all that he's done and all that he's created. Before we do that, we want to have a quick word of prayer as we get into praise and worship. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your incredible creations today, Lord. We're thankful that on day three, we're going to learn all about the gospel. And Lord Jesus, that means how you came to this earth to save us from our sins. And Lord, how you paid attention to every detail as you planned out a way of salvation for every single one of us. And so we are thankful today, Lord Jesus, that you came to save us from our sins so that we could have a relationship with you. Bless this time, bless our praise and worship, and a wonderful night. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Be sure to see the dolphin dance and penguins on parade. There's 
give the Lord the glory for the wonders that He's made. Put your hands up in the air. Yeah. It's time to take that ride. Put your hands up in the air. Woo. And let the Lord be glorified. Hey there, everyone, and welcome to today's Wow Zone Bible Time. Now, today's Bible Time is all about a thrill ride through time. Now, I don't know about you, but I love thrill rides. And when we go to theme parks, every year it seems like they're getting bigger, faster. Each park is building the biggest possible thrill ride it can. And they'll spend hundreds of millions of dollars on these amazing rides to attract people there and to get more guests. So today we're going to talk all about a thrill ride through time. And when we go on a thrill ride, you think about going on that roller coaster, and as you go up the hill and it's clicking all the way up, what do you do on the way down, right? Put your hands up in the air and, and enjoy the ride. So today we're going to go through some different hit moments throughout the Bible. And in these moments, some of them are going to be high times and some of them are going to be low times. And I want you to help me out. When we see, we're going to show you some pictures that go along with these times. And when it's a high time, I want you to stick your hands up in the air like you're having a blast on a ride. And when it's a low time, I want you to get down low like you're turning a sharp corner on a ride, okay? So I'm going to need your help. Now today we're going to start out in Genesis chapter 1. We've been talking all about creation, and you should know these words by now. In Genesis chapter 1 it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And we've talked about all the different animals that God created, all the plants, the whole world around us and also the two uh, first people that God created. Do you know their names? Hopefully you said Adam and Eve. That's right. God created Adam and Eve as well. So when God created the world, Adam and Eve, all the animals, was that a high time or a low time? Yes, that's right. It's a high time. It's an exciting time as God created all these things. And we see everything was perfect in the beginning. Everything was working out uh, so very perfectly. 
Now when we get to this next part, pay attention because some things are going to start to change. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 3 now. And in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible tells us about a serpent. Listen to what it says in verse 1 here. It says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. And one day a serpent came up to the woman and said, Did God really say to you, you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? He questioned. He said, Are you sure that's what God said? And he tried to get into her mind. And so we see some things starting to change there. And as we continue to read the story, we know that the serpent talked to Eve and convinced Eve that you're not, nothing bad's going to happen. You're not going to die if you eat that fruit that God told you not to eat. If you want it, you go ahead and eat it. And guess what? Eve did just that. She ate the forbidden fruit. And the Bible goes on to tell us that she gave something to her husband, Adam. And Adam also ate of the fruit. And so Adam and Eve committed that very first sin. And so the Bible calls this the fall of man. It is when sin entered the world and everything changed. Now, was this a high point or a low point? It was a very low point. Sin entered the world for the first time as they gave in to the temptation and they did what God told them not to do. Now, have you ever done that? Have you ever done something your mom and dad told you not to do? Yeah. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that we've all sinned. In the book of Romans, it tells us that everybody, we've all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And so this is a very low point uh, in, the, in the book of uh, Genesis here. Now, we're going to continue uh, into, ver into chapter 3. And in verse 14, it says this, and this is some of the punishments that God uh, issued towards Adam and Eve. And so it says, Then the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the wild animals, domestic and wild, and you will crawl on your belly and gro be groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman. And between your offspring and her offspring, he will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Now this is uh, something we know that the, the devil, the enemy, is always trying to attack us because the devil does not like God. And so the devil does not like God's people either. And so he's always after us. We always have issues with the devil uh, trying to tempt us. And in verse 16, he says to the woman that, that you will have this awful pain of childbirth. And the Bible says that you will desire to control your husband, but he is to rule over you. And so the Bible tells us that God designed for the man, the husband, to be in charge. And God tells us that women will have this awful uh, pain uh, in childbirth. And then he says to the man, since you listened to your wife and you ate from the tree, the fruit that I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. And you will struggle throughout your life to scratch a living from the ground. And it will grow thorns and thistles, but yet you will eat of its grains. And by the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat. And until you return to the ground from which you were made, from you were made from dust and to dust you will return. So God tells men they will be punished by sweating and having to work hard for their food and to provide for their families uh, all, all the time until the one day when they go back into the ground, when we all die. And so the Bible tells us there, death, death is a punishment. That's uh, part of this. And so we see these punishments handed out. Now, everybody should know this one. Is a punishment a good thing or a bad thing? That's right. It's a low point. It's a bad thing. Nobody uh, enjoys any, any kind of punishment. Now, as we go on, we know that sin entered the world here. We know Adam and Eve get these punishments, and the Bible tells us they get expelled from the garden. They get sent out from this perfect garden that they were once in. But we also know that the Bible tells us that Jesus was going to come one day. And so we're going to skip ahead now to Luke chapter 2. And in Luke chapter 2, the Bible tells us all about the story of, of Jesus' birth. And so we see that Jesus was born, and Mary and Joseph, they have baby Jesus, and Mary and Joseph named him what? Emmanuel. The Bible says Emmanuel, God with us. He was God here on the earth to be with us. And we know that as he came to the earth, is that a high point or a low point? It's a high point because Jesus came to the earth, and he's going to do Fulfill God's plan. He's going to do something that none of us could do. He's going to pay the price of sin so that we don't have to spend eternity in hell. So we don't have to just be dead. We have the opportunity to live in heaven with Jesus again one day. Now this next image is going to be kind of tough. This next image is when Jesus died on the cross. 
He went to the cross and the, the Bible tells, tells us that He was wounded for us, that He was crushed for the things that we've done, the sins we've committed. He suffered that punishment for and He died on the cross. Now, Jesus died on the cross. Think about that for a minute. Was that a high point or a low point? Now, that seems like a low point, right? Because nobody, I can't believe Jesus had to die. Nobody likes death. But this is actually a high point. And the reason is because Jesus didn't stay dead. The Bible tells us that on the third day, He rose again in victory, in life. And so the Bible tells us that He died on the cross for our sins, and He rose again, and then He went to heaven to prepare a place for us. So it seems like it's a low point that Jesus died on the cross, but it's actually a high point because it means we can all be forgiven for our sins. Jesus rose again. So the last thing I want you to think about is your ride. We talk about a thrill ride, and you start out clicking up that hill, and there's all the high points when you raise your hands, and there's those low points where you grab on as tight as you can. But ultimately, it all comes back around to the station, and you have the opportunity. You can get back in line or however, however you want to do, spend the rest of your day at the park. But how is the ride of your life going to end? Jesus offers us all eternal life, which means we can live forever in heaven with Him one day. All we have to do is accept Him. And today's echo phrase is all about that. It says we have to admit, we have to believe, and we can forever receive. So we first admit that we're a sinner and we need a Savior. The Bible tells us we've all sinned and we need a Savior. We believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again and we can have freedom from sin. And then we can receive Him as our Lord and Savior, and we can know that we have it forever in heaven with Him one day. So that's an awesome thing. That's an extremely high point today. So now we're going to go over that echo phrase again, talk all about admitting, believing, and forever receiving. Hey, everyone. My name is Roller Coaster Ray. Well, hey there, Roller Coaster Ray. Where's Reese at? Uh, well, he got a little sick on the hurler, and let's just say that it's a good name for the ride. Oh, no. Oh, that's, that's gross. Uh, well, what's going on there, Ray? Uh, well, you all know how much I love roller coasters. They have their highs and lows for sure. It's always a great feeling to come swooshing into the landing safe and sound. It sure is. Well, life is kind of like a roller coaster, too. Yeah, you know what? You're right. I've been telling the boys and girls about that. We just read the book of Genesis, and we talked about the, the high points and the low points. And you know what? We want everyone to end up safe and sound one day in heaven. Me too. But to do that, they need to know there are really just two possible endings. That's right. You know what? You can either end up in the really, really, really high point of heaven or the lowest of all low points, which is hell. If you end up in heaven, then you know you're a, a child of God. That's the, the ultimate high point. But in order to do that, you have to admit that you're a sinner, believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. So in order to receive Jesus as your Savior, there's those key things that you need to do. The first one is admit. Let's say that together. Admit. Admit. You need to admit to God that you, you've sinned and you're sorry and you've messed up. Now, think about that. Have you ever done something wrong and you're truly sorry for it, right? Then you apologize and you, you ask to be forgiven. And so we do the same thing with God. We admit that we're a sinner and we ask for Him to forgive us. The next thing we do is believe. Let's say that together. Believe. believe. And so we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and that He rose again and that through Him we can have eternal life. And the last thing that we do is... Receive and forever receive. You can tell him you want to be his child and follow him no matter what forever. Sometimes it's not easy following the Lord. You have to be sure you want to. That's right. So we have to admit, believe, and forever receive. If you have any kind of questions about this, you can always talk to God about it. You can let us know if you have any questions. We'd love to, to help you out. Well, I've got to go. I'm meeting a friend in the Green Dragon roller coaster, and I think I'll tell him about admit, believe, forever receive while we're waiting in line. That sounds like a great plan, Ray. All right, we'll see you later. You have fun on your ride, okay? Okay. Ray has a great point, boys and girls. If you've already admitted, believed, and received, if you're a child of God today, then tell someone about it. We want everyone to end up at the ultimate high point. 
not lost in the forever low point. So tell somebody about it. Spread that word about admitting, believing, and forever receiving. That's our echo phrase today. Let's say it together. Admit, believe, forever receive. One more time. Admit, believe, forever receive. Welcome back to Midway Games. Now today we're learning all about the gospel and how we all need Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior to save us from sin. And so when we go back to the book of Genesis, we learn all about Adam and Eve and how they committed that first sin. And what was that first sin with when they, God had provided all the food, all the fruit, everything that they needed, but they still desired that one forbidden fruit. And when they ate of that, they disobeyed God and sin entered the world. And that's why we all need a Savior to save us from that sin. So today we're going to play a little game that maybe some of you have seen somewhere else before. And we're going to play that game using a fruit. I have a little lemon here with me. And we're going to play a little guessing game and see how good your eyesight is. So I have three little cups here and we're going to plop the lemon down under this one right here in the middle. Keep your eyes on the middle. I'm going to shuffle them up really fast and I want you to guess. Do you think it's on the right, the left, or in the middle? And at the end of each round, I want you to guess. Put your guess down in the comment section below after I finish mixing them up, and we're going to see if you got your eyes on the lemon. All right, here we go. All right. Make your guess. Do you think it's on the right, on the left, or in the middle? Put your guess down in the comment section. Did you guess in the middle? If you did, oh, sorry, not right. Did you guess over here on the left? Oh, sorry, not there. But if you guessed on the right then, you were correct. You found our missing fruit. You found the lemon. Now, I don't know about you, but when I go to a theme park, I don't want a little cup like this. I want to get the big drinks. You got to get that special keepsake cup, right? And so here we have a, an even bigger fruit, a banana. And we're going to hide it underneath one of our cups. And I, we're going to mix them up once again. I'm going to see if I can go a little faster this time. Oh man, this one's gonna get tricky. Now hopefully since the cups are bigger, makes it a little easier for you this time. But I don't know. We've got lots of mixing going on here. All right. Now, make sure you place your guess in the comment section. Now this time, did you guess over here on the right? If you did, oh sorry, not this time. Maybe you said in the middle, did you? Because if you said in the middle, you were correct. You found our missing fruit. Now make sure you let us know how you did in the comment section below. And we hope you have a wonderful time here and the rest of tonight's Incredible World Vacation Bible School. Welcome back boys and girls. We're so glad to have you with us this week as part of our Incredible World VBS. And again, we've been having such a good time this week learning about God's creation, His incredible world. Again, as the name of our VBS says, it's an amazement park in, of sorts. And God's world is amazing. Today we've been learning about God paying attention to the details of His creation. And so Tonight we're going to be doing a craft that focuses on some of God's smaller creatures, bugs. And I don't know if you've ever done this, but I remember growing up, I used to love to go out and catch fireflies. We called them lightning bugs. And we put them in a jar and we'd love to see them light up and glow. And you can catch fireflies, you can catch other types of bugs. I would recommend going outside maybe with one of your parents so that you don't catch any bugs that could harm you or sting you or something like that. But 
we're going to be talking about how we can make a little uh, home for them to catch them in and, and keep them in temporarily. So uh, tonight, get a parent to help you with this. But you can take a clear jar. Uh, it could be glass or plastic. And you'll want a, some kind of a lid that screws on. If it has a label, you'll want to take that label and peel it off. Um, and I'm not going to peel that whole label off, but you'll just want to peel it off so you can see the bugs inside the jar. And then you'll want to take the lid of that jar and poke some holes in it. You can use an ice pick. You can use a nail and a hammer. You could even use a drill bit to drill some holes in it, but that way they can get some air. And then inside the jar, if you'll take and put some things that you'll find outside into the jar so they'll have a, a nice place to live and it'll give you op opportunity to observe them inside. Again, just get you a clear jar, doesn't matter what it's made of, and then you can put some things in. Let's see what we got in here. We've got some sticks and we have got some leaves like these right here. And in the bottom, I can't reach my hand in there, but we've got some rocks as well. And you can put all these different things. There's a little bit of grass in there. You could use pine needles, but put some of these things down in the jar and then have fun going outside and finding a bug to put down in your jar. And boys and girls, once you get your jar Field, you may also want to take some stickers. If you have some stickers or some bugs or whatever, you could put those stickers on your jar as well, and you can decorate your jar, make it look like anything you want it to look. And then when you get through doing that, go outside. Remember, God made bugs and enjoy collecting some of those bugs and put them in your jar where you can see them. Hope you enjoy going outside and catching some bugs, and hope you have a good night. Hey there boys and girls and welcome to today's concession stand snack. Now today's theme is all about fruit and so that's what our snack's going to sit around tonight. You can grab any kind of fruit juice you would like, apple juice, grape juice, my personal favorite, lemonade. Uh, you can have some of that uh, and then grab yourself some fruit. It can be whatever kind you want. You can grab a bowl uh, and get yourself some, some grapes. You could get some, some blueberries. Uh, maybe you want to grab a a skewer like this and a little plate and you can cut up some pieces of apple or some orange strawberries whatever you like uh, and have yourself a nice little snack all about fruit tonight now look at all this fruit here and this is only a small example of all the different kinds of fruit that God has created that's all over the, the world today and all these different kinds of fruit they're so colorful and and we can eat them and just think about that as just a fraction of all the fruit and different foods that God made available to Adam and Eve in the garden. Now, what's interesting is when we read the story about Adam and Eve, we know God gave them all this wonderful food and told them they could eat all the different fruit and everything except for one. And we know from reading our Bible story in the book of Genesis that even though they could have all these different fruits, what did they want? The very one that they could not have. So I want you to remember that and think about that tonight as you eat your snack and this fruit, think about all the things that we can have, all the blessings that we do have, because the enemy's always trying to get us to think about what we don't have instead of being thankful and enjoying the things that we do have. So think about that tonight and be thankful for the many wonderful blessings that God has given us. Oh, let's see here. Duct tape, check. Out of order signs, check. Scary music CDs, check. Super glue, check. And most importantly, the keys to the animals' cages, check. Operation Sabotage Theme Park is a go. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day. Look what we just got. We got a package. 
All right, my cousin's into town. He's visiting, and he brought this package he wanted me to give to the extreme team. I wonder what it is. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's see here. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, looks like there's a little critter in here. And there's oh, a, look, there's a note. There's a note, yep. Let's see here. It says, greetings, Incredible World, and hello, Extreme Team. I know how much you all love God's incredible creatures, so I thought you'd like to add this new species of termite to your collection. Wow. It was just recently discovered. Best wishes, Mitchell. Wow, what a great guy. Man, that's neat. This is going to make a, a great addition to our, our bug exhibit. The Extreme Team's going to love this. Oh, wait, 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 here, there's some more. It says, P.S., watch your fingers. We named this new termite Little Piranha. Oh, Little Piranha. I wonder why they call them that. Um, let's see. Well, uh, got a piece of candy in my pocket, maybe. Let's see how he does with that. Uh, Don't you think that's too big for that little termite? No, not at all. This, this will be just fine. L let's find out. Let's see. He ate the whole thing. Huh. Well, they say he's a termite, so let's try some wood. Let's see. You're here. going to feed him that. Well, why not? He's a termite, isn't he? Let's see here, little guy. What can you do? Oh, oh my goodness. He no. ate the whole thing. I'm starting to see why they call him Little Piranha. Man, that's incredible. Well, I wonder if we could feed him something bigger. Uh, I don't know. Um, what do you think, little guy? You all full? I don't know. I think you fed him enough. Well, let's see. What do you think? Oh, yep. Uh, I think so. Guess you're right. Well, uh, I guess I'll go give him to the extreme team, see if they can find a nice little uh, habitat for him, and then I'm off with my cousin to ride some rides. I think he's really excited to ride the hurdler, so we'll see how this goes. Sounds good. I'll see you later. Hi, is this the extreme team? Well, this is part of it. My sister's in the back trying to find a habitat for a new bug. Well, this is I'm Mr. Holloway from Adventure TV. You know, we're kind of a big deal. Adventure TV? Wow. Welcome to Incredible World. I guess you heard about the theme park award? Um, actually, no. I'm here to talk to you. Really? What about? Yes, your show has grown extremely popular. It is all over the news. In fact, it is probably why Incredible World has been winning the world's best theme park award in the first in the first place. Wow, that's incredible. You really think so? Yes, that's why I'm here to offer you an opportunity for your own TV show. What? Our own show? On Adventure TV? Yes, we want you to add an animal show for kids. An extreme team would be perfect. Wow, when do we start? Here's the contract. Just sign at the bottom. Whoa, wait a second. We better think this out first. Can I come back to you tomorrow? I suppose, but to succeed in the showbiz, you have to move quickly. I see the first, I'll see you first thing in the morning. Hey, uh, have you seen Pastor Trey? I thought he was with my sister. Not anymore. He was supposed to be riding rides with his cousin, but I heard there's been a lot of malfunctions. Oh no. Things have been going crazy recently. Goodness. Yeah, so I heard he's out there sick as a dog, and I've been dealing with all these other problems. What kinds of problems? Well, all over the park things have been going bad. I mean, there's mustard and ketchup containers, salt and pepper shakers are glued to the tables, fountains are duct taped off, and now I got a call from Kitty Land that somebody switched the music to scary music, and now it's freaking out all the kids. Well, someone's been busy. Oh my goodness, I just had a bad thought. The animal cages. Oh, of course the hurler would have to malfunction. Oh. oh, oh, sir, I'm really sorry. Um, it looks like you have a sign on your back. A sign? Yeah. What does it say? Out of order. You can leave it there. That's exactly how I feel. All right. Well, I need a nice pack. Uh, hey there, I'm Mrs. Banks. You sure do seem to be happy for all the trouble we're having today. 
Oh, yes. I'm very happy. That's great. We need more of that today. But are you joyful? Joyful? What's the difference? Oh, there's a big difference, my friend. Happiness comes from your situation. But true joy comes from the Lord and knowing your sins are forgiven. Do you think you're good enough to get to heaven, Helen? To heaven? Maybe not right now, but I do sometimes. You know, I used to think I was good enough. I did nice things to help people. But the Bible makes it clear that we all mess up and we all need a Savior. We could never be good enough on our own. Never? That's right. So without forgiveness, we'd all be headed to hell. You mean? <laughs> That's right. Talk about feeling hopeless. But then comes the good news. Jesus died and rose from the dead, and he paid our penalty of sin so we could go free and be with him in heaven one day. And all I had to do was admit that I had broken God's laws, turned away from his sins, and trust in Jesus to save me. So that's what you did. You better believe it. And now I'm a part of God's family forever. And that brings me joy. Well, enough about me. Let's talk about you. Oh, that's Mr. Monarch calling. Sorry, I gotta go. Come on, man. Dear God, please help Mr. Miller understand how much he needs you, just like he did for me. And Lord, thank you for a wonderful day at Incredible World. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Too bad their conversation got cut short, but I'm so glad that Ms. Banks had the opportunity to share the gospel with Miller. I really like the prayer that she prayed. She said, God, I pray that Miller understands how much he needs you. You know, we all need God, don't we? And maybe today you know God. That is wonderful. You're a part of the family of God. But if you do not know God today, please understand, we all need to be a part of the family. And it's the greatest decision that you'll ever make. All right, boys and girls, it's time to review our attraction today as we wrap things down here for day three of Incredible World VVS. So tonight's Bible verse, Incredible verse, is extremely important uh, because it's all about the gospel of Jesus Christ and accepting Him as our Lord and Savior. So I want everyone to get ready to shout this with me as loud as you possibly can. Everybody say Romans 10, 9. Let's say it together. Romans 10, 9. This verse says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that He died on the cross and God raised Him again from the dead, you will be saved. And that is the truth for every single one of us, that if we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and God rose Him again, uh, if we confess with our mouth that He is Lord, we believe that in our heart, we can be saved. Now, Crackers is here to help us go over that memory verse because we've got to make sure that we remember that verse because it's, it's so important to remember our Incredible verse. So, Crackers, are you ready to uh, help us out with our Incredible verse tonight? I'm ready, Pastor. Are they ready? Yes, I think they're ready. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Here we go. You ready, Crackers? I'm ready, Pastor. All right, say Romans. Romans. 10, 9. 10, 9. Uh, if you confess with your mouth. If you confess with your mouth. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, and you believe in your heart. And you believe in your heart. That God raised him from the dead. That, well, Dad, Pastor, I don't want to die, Pastor Trey. I don't want to die, Pastor Trey. They're going to die, Pastor Trey. No, Crackers, you're not going to die yet. No, it's okay. Dad, Pastor, I don't want to die, Pastor Trey. No, Crackers, nobody's trying to, to get you. This is just a game. This, these ducks are fake. This is fake targets. They're not trying to shoot you. They're not, Pastor Trey. No, you it's, sure? just, it's just a little game, you know, where you hit the little ducks over. You're going to keep me safe, Pastor Trey. We're going to keep Crackers safe, aren't we, everybody? Yes. Keep me safe, Pastor Trey, from the ducks and the targets. God, keep me safe. Yes, you are not a target, Crackers, okay, I promise. Pastor Trey. All right, let's, let's just try this again. Everybody say Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth. If you confess with your mouth. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. And you believe in your heart. And you believe in your heart. That God raised him from the dead. That God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. You will be saved. Say. Isn't that great news, Crackers? It is, Pastor Trey. I was a little scared, but you saved me, Pastor Trey. Yes, and if we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, if we confess that with our mouth, believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, we can all be saved. Every single one of us. Isn't that great? 
That's great, Pastor Joy. I'm so excited for that. Thank you so much, Crackers. We're glad you're able to help us with these verses. All right, kids. Now, we've got a few games we're going to go over real quick that can help you memorize tonight's Incrediverse. But let's say goodbye to Crackers and tell him thank you for joining us once again. Bye, Bye Crackers. Bye. We'll see you later. Bye. Have a good day. All right, guys. Let's check out a few of these games to help you remember our Incrediverse. All right, boys and girls, now that we've reviewed our Incrediver Incrediverse and had a wonderful time here tonight at Incredible World BBS, we've got a few last-minute challenges that we want to encourage you to do uh, between tonight and tomorrow night's lesson. Because we've learned tonight that we live in a sin-cursed and fallen world, we know that we all need a Savior. We know that bad things do happen. And so I want to encourage you tonight, maybe take a moment for someone that you know who's hurting, somebody who's going through a tough time. Maybe you can make a little card to send them to tell them that you're praying for them and thinking about them. And challenge two is to make up a song or a poem that has to do with today's echo phrase. Admit, believe, forever receive. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that it's that simple. Admit, believe, forever receive. So I want to pray with you now. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, now is the perfect opportunity for you to come to know Him just to admit, to believe, and receive Him today. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank You for Your Word. Lord God, we thank You that You sent Your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth, to die on the cross for all of our sins, Lord, and that through You, Lord Jesus, we can have a relationship once again. We're so thankful that You provide that forgiveness of sin. And so, Lord, right now, I just pray over everybody who's watching this, Lord, I pray that if they don't know You, right now would be their moment where they say, Father God, I believe, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I admit that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. We all do. The Bible makes it very clear that all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We all need a Savior. We believe that you came to this earth, died on the cross for our sins, and that you rose again and have a place prepared for us in heaven one day. And so today we admit that we're a sinner and need a Savior. We believe that you died on the cross for our sins, and we receive you into our hearts now as Lord and Savior and King of Kings and Lord of Lords in our lives. Thank you so much for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you said that, if you say that prayer tonight, you are a part of God's family, and it's that simple. Admit, believe, forever receive. Thank you for joining us for night number three, and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow night. Bye, guys. Woo! Hop on the crazy kangaroo, you're gonna have a blast. Be sure to see the dolphin dance and penguins on parade. Let's give the Lord the glory for the wonders that he's made. Put your hands up in the air. Yeah.